Welcome back, sports fans. The sport of the thrill of the chase is what I'm talking about. Today, it's another episode of the House Husband Diaries. I have to say, as always, I'm your host, Carter C. We're back in the book with a theme. And uh, I'll say this. Let me get it out of the way early. Uh, If you like my videos, you can like them. That's fine. But please subscribe. I'm trying to build that subscriber base. My birthday is at the end of May, and I really like to get to a thousand subscribers. I'm a quarter of the way there, and uh, you know everything's growing, everything's great. I love it. But if you if you've been watching the videos and you're just kind of like I'm not really worried about subscribing, it would mean a lot to me. Doesn't necessarily mean a lot to you. It just takes a you know a second to click, and uh, I really appreciate it. And, uh, and yeah, so happy 40th birthday, you know, you can, you can write on a comment or something, happy 40th and, uh, you know, pre happy 40th or something. That'd be really fun for me. So, uh, so yeah, so, I uh, don't want to belabor the point, but it would, it would be nice. So thanks so much for, uh, for subscribing to the house husband diaries. Cause who doesn't love your favorite house husband, right? Today we are back in the thrill of the chase Forrest Finn's memoir hunting for something that will lead us to the treasure chest and today is i don't know how many people have talked about this if you if you found that this is a theme if if you just kind of noticed it in the back of your mind if you didn't notice it uh it's not really talked about a whole lot but i i noticed it come up over and over as i was reading and reading and reading and it's the, 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 the mention of care. More specifically, the mention of I don't care after a line. So, so Forrest will say something in the thrill of the chase and say, follow it with, but I don't care anyway. Or, you know, something like it doesn't matter. But he says care a lot. So we're on page six. Right at the beginning, starts off with a bang. There's four mentions of care. Third sentence. I could have just said I'm 79, so I could be a year younger, but I don't care anyway. If you don't care, why mention it? But you think it's funny. It's funny, but I don't care. And then next sentence, over the years, more important things came in and out of my life. So I never much cared even then. He does a lot of not caring. You know, if you're going to write a memoir, is, are you going to include the things you care about? Or are you going to include things you don't care about? Are you going to waste your time writing about things you don't care about and then say, I don't care. Because that seems like you care. But he doesn't care, right? If you take him at his word, he doesn't care. We'll keep going. Third paragraph down. When my wife built our house, she put a skylight in my bathroom flat above the shower. It was a design, a design deficiency, but she didn't have to stand there and see, so she didn't care. Bottom of the page, last sentence. He said that his habit, Eric Sloan, that his habit of never dating his letters or paintings was not a careless oversight, but rather a deep personal superstition that ignoring time itself might be a secret technique to delay aging. I get that that one's a stretch. It's careless, you know, not a careless. He's not saying I don't care, but he's saying it's not careless. It's a lot of caring and not caring, mostly not caring, careless, not caring going on on page six. 
page 16. Down at the bottom. His mother used really bad language on him. And she didn't even care who was standing around with big ears. Isn't that weird? That she didn't even care who was standing around with big ears. And you go back to page six. And his wife, she didn't have to stand there and see. So she didn't care. So no, no vision. We're talking about the five senses. They don't, so, so, so Peggy Jean doesn't care because she doesn't have to see. This mother doesn't have to care, or she doesn't even care who's standing around with big ears, who's listening. And then we flip over four pages to 20. No place for biddies. He'd run away from home, but he's not allowed to cross the street. And they laughed real hard and didn't even care who heard. They didn't care who heard. Another sense. One of the five senses. Next page, page 21. Anyway, those two old biddies are probably long since dead. And what do I care? That'll teach those two. Really? What do you care? Death? You you care later in my war for me that no one cries anymore. That they're dead and forgotten. But those two old biddies, they're probably long since dead, and who cares about them? Why do you not care? Because they personally insulted you? But is that really a made-up insult? Or do you not care about just people in general that insult you, but you care about the people that go to war and you don't know, and you don't know whether or not they were good people or not, but they were, they were, they passed away in war, which you felt like maybe was unjust. Am I digging too deeply into, into caring here? Do you see that as an aberration out on the edge? Is it subtle? This has nothing to do with caring, but I would say that my first reading of this book, I noticed the whole uh, Catcher in the Rye in Manhattan and then Eric Sloan dying in Manhattan, and I wrote down Manhattan, and I couldn't figure out anything. I was like, why is Manhattan? That's just weird. Just two mentions at the very beginning, and then uh, in the live video that, that Mike and I were doing, Somebody in the chat, I don't remember who it was, but, uh, um, you know, I'm sure you can comment and take, take credit for it. It's not my idea, but then they said something about Los Alamos is right outside of Santa Fe and that's where the Manhattan project was and the bomb, maybe it's Homer Brown or I don't know who it was. <clears throat> I'm not saying it has anything to do with, with Los Alamos and the Manhattan project, but I thought that was a really interesting connection that I hadn't made. And um, I know people have probably talked about that a bunch, but I, I've never really been involved in those conversations. So it, it's, it, it's interesting. The doomsday clock, I don't really, I don't really get that. So maybe, maybe if you could email me at Carter at HH Diaries and kind of explain that, that thought process. I don't know how a doomsday clock, I've been talking a lot about time, but I don't really know how a doomsday clock connects to, um, to anything. Anywho. Page 29. Down at the bottom. Talking about the cats. Uh, this is Bessie and me milking the cow and the cats coming around. And he, he misses their mouths a little and splatters them in the face. Splatter. Oh, sounds like scattered and sprinkled. Splattered. Thinking about those clues splatter them in the face they didn't seem to care much about that and when it was over they'd walk away licking themselves and feeling blessed now that to me seems like a nothing burger in fact it's pretty much what i had in my notes however having seen that clip about 
being in a graveyard alone when a kid really has time to think, connecting that to being shot down in Laos. Now I'm thinking, they didn't seem to care much about that, and when it was over, they'd walk away licking themselves and feeling blessed. Feeling blessed? Were they blessed because they got the milk? Were they thinking about higher things? Now I'm like questioning kittens in this, and I just, I don't think kittens are the, I don't think kittens are the key. Does anybody else sound as crazy to themselves as I sound to myself? Sometimes. Sometimes I don't sound crazy. Page 41. Up at the top. Talking about the, the music, you know, the radio show. Many times I'd win and it made everyone mad because I didn't much care one way or the other. Skippy never participated because he was above such nonsense. He was a lot like my father. I don't know if there's anything there for you. But he doesn't much care. He doesn't care for winning. Like I keep saying in these videos, I, I wonder how much of this is just uh, background noise. He keeps using the same phrase because one or two of those are subtle hints, subtle clues. But if he only mentioned it once or twice, it would be easier to pick up on. But if he mentions it a dozen times, it's really hard to keep track. Or you don't know which ones are which. And it provides him opportunities in, in interviews to say, well, I, I use it this way, or I use it that way, or I use it this way. And he's not wrong. Misdirection, subterfuge. All right, page 53. We're moving on along almost halfway, a little over halfway. Uh, down at the bottom, the problem was that the plane couldn't take off again because of the altitude, and I don't think Skippy even cared. Has anybody checked that out? Has anybody gone and, and seen if, if, if you can... Um, if you can, if you can take off from a, from Hebgen Lake, is that possible? Was it possible back then? Did they not have the power in the engines or something? Like, is that, is that even true? I mean, I just take that as for granted because I don't really, like, I don't really know that, that makes a difference, but it'd be interesting. I mean, he's a pilot, you know? I feel like that's specialized knowledge, so I don't think it has anything to do with the chase with finding the treasure chest, but. Just thought I'd ask since I'm making the video. Page 94. Down towards the bottom. Those words burned in my brain, and I can see them just as clearly now as I did then, when I was so rushed. I took care to replace the stone marker as it had fallen, and smoothed the grass to hide it over. I've said that sentence a number of times, right? I took care to replace the stone marker as it had fallen and smooth the grass to hide it over. Not I made sure. I took care. Emotion. Tears. Care. But I don't care. Don't worry about that. I don't care. Page 103. Down towards the bottom, second to last paragraph. Open the door for her, not to make her way easier, but just to say you care. Again, I don't really know that that has a purpose other than filler. I will say this, I opened a door for a girl years and years and years ago I was in college I mean, it was like 20 years ago and uh, I just you know I walked through the door and I just held it open for her she was behind me and she stopped and she was like I don't need you to hold the door for me and I was like really and she was like yeah like I don't need you to patronize me or whatever so I just slammed that I pulled the door shut and I was like fine I'm not overly proud of that. I tell that story because if somebody holds the door for me, I don't feel like it's patronizing or it's sexist or it's whatever. I'm like, thanks. That's like way less work that I have to do. I don't understand why that was offensive. 
I think we're that was just it's a silly time, you know. If we're hating on people for opening doors, I mean, there's bigger problems in this world, you know what I mean? All right. Page 109. I thought this was interesting. Right after the do not touch and all bold read, it was outrageously rude of those people to threaten me like that. And I suddenly feared for my wallet, no place for the meek. Maybe there's do not touch, do not enter signs, do not something signs. I feared for my wallet as well as my life. So I very carefully pulled my shoulders in, put both hands in my pockets and inched for the door. I don't know. Do you think we have to squeeze in somewhere? Right as we're getting to the treasure chest, you see the blades if you've been wise and you got to you look quickly down, but maybe you have to no place for the meek. You fear for your life. You got to squeeze in, inch your way forward towards the door. I don't know. I don't think you'd put your hands in your pockets, but just trying to use my imagination. Just my imagination running away with me. Father on the Banco, page 119. He had a master's degree in education and had spent his adult life teaching children. And all I had was a knack for taking care of myself and my family. That still bothers me. I think Father on the Bank uh, plays a bigger role in this story than we give it credit for. I think I've said that in another video, but uh, it's such a small paragraph, page. Why would you include it if it doesn't have something? It's not talked about. It's not direct, but something, something there. Page 127. My favorite soda was Grape Ed, but the bottle it came in was so small, there was almost no room for the drink inside. But I didn't care. I just drank it anyway. One of my rules was that I couldn't collect the cap unless I first drank the pop, but that idea wasn't too good because I didn't have enough nickels to sustain it. So, in closing, this episode on care, and more specifically, I don't care. I wonder if Forrest is using that as a subtle kind of elbow, you know, and I don't care, but I really do care. If he always says something that's important and then he follows it with, but I don't care, we're just moving on. If you read him at his word, well, he doesn't care. Okay, well, that's, you know, there's that's nothing, you know, he doesn't care. Move on. But does he follow something subtle with I don't care, which leads us back to, hey, maybe we should look at those words or those sentences or those paragraphs. Is there something in there? That's why I did this video. Let me know what you think. If you like it, thumbs up. If you don't like it, thumbs down. If you don't care, don't push a button. It's not really, you know, that hard. I would hate for you to sprain a finger. Because then I don't know what you would do. But uh, thanks so much for watching this episode of The House Husband Diaries. Leave a comment. You can email me, carter at hhdiaries.com. Uh, you know, whatever. Love to uh, love to have you comment, be a part of any live show. Just just shoot, shoot me a message. It's fun. And hopefully we'll find the treasure this year. All right. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for watching.